Hello everyone, it's Safrina from Feng Shui and Prosper and uh, just give me a, just want to give everyone a couple of seconds to join me. Hopefully I'll have some people joining me live. Um, today I want to talk about a topic that has been popping up quite a little, uh, quite a little bit now that we are getting into summer and real estate in um, in most parts of the world, I'm assuming, especially here in Toronto, Canada, is definitely heating up. And I'm getting a lot of owners and um, you know buyers and sellers and even real estate agents coming to me um, in terms of helping them boost chances of selling their home. Now. There's been a, couple, uh, a theme that's been popping up uh, lately, and it is about T-junction. And I want to take this opportunity to um, to set the record straight a little bit. Okay, so there is this now. T-junctions have always been a topic, like a hot topic in feng shui. And if you guys have never heard of it, is that there's this belief that homes that are situated in front of a T junction is bad feng shui. Um, actually, I should kind of draw it up a little bit for you guys here. Let me grab my trusty board here so I can draw it out to you guys really briefly. So, with one hand. <laughs> um, so let me just quickly draw that. Uh, if you guys can see. So this is my very professional drawing, by the way. So you see the T-junction and there is a home situated right in front of it. And everyone is, so the phone calls that I've been getting is that, you know, the, the owner of the house is not getting any offers because people come to the house and then they see, oh my gosh, it's right in front of a T-junction and therefore they don't get an offer. Um, and this obviously is really con a, a big concern for them because they can't change the T-junction. It's not something that they have any control over. And they were asking me about remedies. Now, there are remedies for T-junction, but depending on the situation, uh, there's actually a small percentage of time where the T-junction, in fact, can be a really good thing for the home. Um, so when is a T-junction? Now, this is a blanket situation, okay? I don't want you to... Um, the thing about a lot of the feng shui advice that I give is that it's not always a hundred percent so bear this in mind so the t-junction is an issue most of the time if the front door is right in front of the t-junction so if you can if you guys can see <laughs> this is very makeshift by the way so this is the t-junction here and then the door is right here but what if <laughs> I wasn't planning I wasn't planning on drawing you guys so this is a very last minute thing but what if the front door is not there and it's actually on this side is the t-junction still an issue at that point if you guys can see it's not because the t-junction actually hits what is right now the side of the house not the front door so for me based on my observation the T-junction is usually more of a concern if it hits directly the front door, meaning when you're standing at the front door and you open the door and you see that T part of the junction, that is usually, again, not all the time. Hey, Nafisa, how was Disney? <laughs> Looks like you guys had a lot of fun. Um, yeah, so the first question is, where is the T-junction actually hitting? What part of the home is it actually hitting? So if it's not affecting the front door most of the time i would not worry about it okay um so that's uh that's one and then the second one is based on flying star feng shui if the if the energy of the t-junction 
in fact, strengthens prosperous energy, like, a, you know, energy that gives you a lot of abundance, a lot of love and a lot of money, then the T-junction is actually a good thing. So again, this is not something that I can go in depth in, in a live stream. But for instance, let's say, go, <laughs> I'm really laughing at this right now. But let's say this is the T-junction and the front door is around here okay not over here but the front door is about here but the front door actually has money at the door and how do you know if your front door has money at the door it depends on your period and it depends on the facing of the home okay um and so the t-junction the especially if it's um if it's like a fairly good amount of traffic so the traffic actually when you have cars coming it actually strengthens the money energy there and in fact the owner that i had a conversation with was it two days ago uh she actually said that this home that everyone is so scared about because of the t-junction this was actually the is actually the home that she and her husband called their lucky home because ever since they moved in they actually did really really well so how could you expect and this is my problem with blanket no no's in term you know do's and don'ts in terms of feng shui there is very very little uh you know very little guidelines that are a hundred percent applicable okay water placement guideline being one of, them, one of them there's no going around that uh there's a couple more that i can think about but the t-junction is definitely something that you don't want to um you don't want to just put a blanket generalization on. So that's why she was so confused. She said, but then Safrina, you know, this, this house actually did really, really well for us. We've been here for 15 years and nothing but great things have been happening. Uh, you know, so sh she was like, and yet all these people, they come in and they see the tea junction and they don't buy, they don't want to buy our lucky home. Um, so, you know, because because she doesn't believe in feng shui but then she keeps hearing people saying oh bad feng shui bad feng shui and it doesn't get sold she said i don't believe in feng shui but how can feng shui um explain what people think is bad luck but in fact has worked really really well for us that was her question so that was what prompted this live stream in that before you write off a home as being bad luck ask yourself if you're just doing it based on I want to be you know I don't want to be too harsh here doing it based on proper feng shui knowledge or just doing based on doom and gloom that is put out there by a lot of fast food feng shui information right the same as having a toilet in the southeast corner you think that's flushing your money there's no such thing you have three money corners you know you have you know so having a bathroom in the southeast corner doesn't mean you can't make money you can definitely make money you just need to figure out how so if any of a, any of you guys have a t-junction um if it is good there i would say like 90 percent of the time t-junctions actually can work really well for the home again it depends on what kind of energy it's actually activating obviously if it's activating negative energy that you want then you want to remedy it um, and the remedy really is to put something between the T-junction and the home, right? It can be anything. So let's say Nafisa's laughing at, yeah, toilet flushing your money. I know there's, and I could do another stream on the toilet thing. But I'm not going to go, you know, too, too far off my topic here, but, um, oh shoot. Okay. Yeah. So I was going to say, how, how do you actually remedy the T-junction? Especially if you know if you know ever since you've been in that home and things have kind of gone downstream and you do have a tea junction that's hitting your front door, then you pretty much just put something between your front door and the tea junction. So anything where if if a car is coming straight at your front door, you and that thing can stop the car, that's what you need. So it can be a gate, it can be a wall. It can be a big stone, uh, you know, any or well, you don't want a tree, but you want something that can stop the car from really veering into the house. Hi, Neth. Neth, Neth is asking, how about cul-de-sac location? We don't like cul-de-sacs. That 
is actually one of the um, uh, again I, I don't want to say blanket generalizations but most of the time cul-de-sacs can pose a structural issue like in or I should say energetic issue okay because by the time the en energy gets to the end of the cul-de-sac it's a, it's you know it's a little bit trapped it's a little bit weak so that's part of uh, that could be another stream in the future but for this one I really want to talk about the T-junction and uh, you know I haven't um, she was gonna give it another week to see if the house sells <laughs> uh, and uh, otherwise she might have me um, come in and take a look at the home but what I was gonna say is if that T junction is actually activating a lot of really good prosperous energy and uh, then all these buyers they're missing on a potentially really good home because of fast food feng shui uh, and who was it was it someone I believe it's someone on this Facebook group as well uh, another thing is don't buy or sell a home just based on your qua number again that could be another topic but let me just touch it really briefly here it doesn't matter so qua number for those of you guys who've never come across it means um, it's a number it's like numerology but not really so it's like you take your uh, year of birth and depending on if you're a male or a female then you come to a calculation of your qua number which is a uh, number ranging from one to nine right except for number five so one to four and then six to nine so the qua number um, separates people into either the west group or the east group and and apparently if you're east group then you only have four good directions and if you're west group you only have other four group directions and do not I can please I beg you not to buy any not to base your home buying or selling situation purely based on your qua number that is most of the time that's gonna work not gonna work for you there's um, it could still be a very unlucky home for you it doesn't matter if it's the right location uh, the right direction for you okay uh, the ones who follow me in my wealth cheap program we've talked quite a bit with regards to this with regards to the quad number in that the eight mansion or the you know doing your doing your feng shui based on the quad number is a very 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 basic way of doing feng shui okay in advanced feng shui we do use the qua number but in not in any shape for or form that has been mentioned in books or online uh you know so in advanced feng shui we do at the qua num look at the qua number but not the direction it's not based on we don't talk about the direction we talk about the element so it's definitely you know a whole different ball game when it comes to that but if you're buying a home and you're a West group and you think just by buying you know Northwest West Southwest and Northeast is gonna be your good direction then I would highly recommend that you get a proper classically trained feng shui consultant because homes are obviously one of the biggest purchases that you can get and I would be very I'd be very sad if someone puts in a huge chunk of their down payment only based on their core number. Okay, so that's another thing. So don't worry too much about the uh, T junction, especially if it's done really, really well for the homeowners. Um, and then, you know, don't make your decisions based on fast food feng shui, really is what I'm trying to say here. <laughs> and how do you know if it's fast food feng shui or not fast food feng shui? Go back to all my old videos. I talk about it all the time. And follow me on this page. Keep your eyes out on my video. My mission really is to open your eyes to what is fast food feng shui, you know, like the feng shui that people well, you know the tips and techniques and advice that people think is feng shui but really it really isn't um, and what is classical feng shui which is how it was done back in the olden days of China the, the way it really should be done that's how I do my consultation that's how I've been trained and that's that is also how I get results for my clients 
so I'm just going to end this live stream here. Thank you so much for everyone who's watching me live, as well as those who are watching my replay. Hey, Danielle from San Antonio, nice. Um, any other topics you'd like me to cover, please message me on Facebook. I, I don't want to just assume people want certain topics, but you know, uh, if I get enough suggestions, then I might just hop on and do one of the ones that you guys sent me. So thanks so much for watching and I will be announcing a June monthly q and I'm probably going to do it if not next week then the week after and I'm really excited to get some of my Wealth Chi home study people to join me there as well. If you are interested on how on learning how to use classical feng shui to boost your three money corners. Remember in classical feng shui, you don't only have one, you have up to three. Some homes even have a fourth. Um, so if you want to learn on um, how to boost these three money corners, I do have my four week home study program where you have workbooks and videos from me guiding you through how to do that. And you also get two uh, monthly Q&A calls that you can jump on for me to look at your layout for you to ask your lay, you know your um, home specific to your homes so that we can do placements um, that are specific to you okay I hate general feng shui advice I really hold myself back from doing it because most of the time it's more harm than good um, but if you you know but if you feel that it is time for you to start letting go of fast food feng shui and really start getting having feng shui give you proper results then check out uh one of my older posts where i talk about the wealth cheap mini program the home study course thanks so much everyone have a great day until next time take care